Shazam. My bad, my bad. There was no way I was going to make a video about how Shazam works without saying that in the beginning. Anywho, you've probably been in a cafe, a party, or even a concert and heard a song you were, you know, kind of bumping to, but you had no clue what it was. In that situation, you most likely whipped out your phone, opened Shazam, or asked Siri what song it was. Within seconds, it told you the name of the song, the artist, and even the album details, and now you're here trying to figure out how it works, what sorcery is happening in the back end. Luckily for you, I had the same question and in this video, we'll be breaking down how Shazam works. Let's get into it. Shazam isn't magic, though it can feel like it. It's actually a pretty cool mixture of modern tech combining some complex algorithms, signal processing, and huge databases. First off, let's clear up some common misconception. Shazam doesn't quite listen to music like we do. It doesn't understand lyrics, melodies, or harmonies. Instead, it uses something even more interesting. When you tap the Shazam button, the app captures a short sample of the audio around you. It then uses a process called Digital Signal Processing, DSP for short, to analyze the sound. DSP involves tweaking audio signals in a captured sample to make them clearer or change their sound. In Shazam, it checks out the audio you've captured, cuts out all the background noise and zeroes in on the main details that makes up the song's digital fingerprint. Think of digital signal processing as a fancy filter that sorts through the captured audio to find what really matters. In this case, it's the song you're listening to. After the digital signal processing is done, the audio sample is converted into a unique digital fingerprint. This is the musical equivalent of a fingerprint that uniquely identifies the song. Here's where it gets a bit technical, but stick with me. To create this fingerprint, Shazam uses a process called Fast Fourier Transform, or FFT for short. It's a signal processing technique that uses mathematical operations to convert the audio signal from its time domain into a frequency domain. In simpler terms, it breaks down the audio into constituent frequencies and measures their intensity over time. This breakdown is transformed into a spectrogram, a visual picture of the audio with time on one axis, frequency on the other, and intensity represented by color or brightness. Shazam then zeroes in on the most noticeable parts of this visual, basically the peaks in the frequency spectrum to create the unique digital fingerprint for the song. Think of it like listening to an orchestra. You hear all the instruments together, but if you could separate the sounds mathematically, you would see a visual representation, which would be the spectrogram. Once this fingerprint is created, Shazam needs to find a match in its vast database to figure out the song you're listening to. This database contains fingerprints of millions of songs. The app sends your song's fingerprints to its servers where it's compared against this massive repository. This comparison is lightning fast thanks to some clever algorithms. One key technique used here is called hashing. Hashing converts data into a fixed size string of characters, which makes comparing large amounts of data quicker. Think of it as creating a unique code for each fingerprint. If you're a programmer and have used a hash map, hash set, or hash table data structure, it's the same hashing that happens under the hood. When Shazam generates your song's fingerprint, it converts it into a hash, a shorter string of characters. The same process is done for every song in Shazam's database. When you search for a song, Shazam quickly compares the hash of your song's fingerprint against the hashes in its database. Once a match is found, it returns the song to you. Shazam also uses machine learning to improve its performance. As more users Shazam songs, the app learns from this data, becoming better at identifying tracks. This is useful for new and obscure songs that might not have been in the database before. The more data Shazam processes, the smarter it gets. Keeping track of millions of fingerprints is no easy task. Shazam uses cloud storage to make it manageable and scalable. It's designed to handle a ton of data without any slowdowns, keeping the app fast and reliable. Since its launch in 1999, Shazam has come a long way. It's constantly expanded to improve its music collections to ensure that users always find what they're looking for. In 2018, Shazam was acquired by Apple and has since been integrated into Apple Music and Siri. There you have it, a high level explanation of how Shazam works. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Uma. I am a software engineer and a content creator. I enjoy learning and breaking down complex technical topics to make them easy for you to understand. I also coach software engineers one-on-one -on -one to help them learn and increase their earning potential. If you'd like to work with me, click the link in the bio below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Network slow. No means say Wi-Fi disconnect. Do you know who you're talking to?